Welcome to the Hockey Writers Prospect Corner, a show with our top prospects writing crew, bringing you the latest news, analysis, scouting reports, mocks, rankings, and much more. From the world juniors to the NHL draft floor, from the farm to the NHL, our team covers everything that happens in the world of prospects. So sit back, grab a notebook, and get ready for Prospect Corner. Prospect Corner. Hello, everybody, and welcome back into another Prospect Corner here at the Hockey Writers. Uh, of course, joined by your host, Matthew Sator, joined in by Peter Barracchini and Devin Little. You know, we're in another, what, another week closer to the draft and scouting combines now in the books. Uh, Peter, you were at the scouting combine live uh, with Mark and Andrew. So, you know, first, first thing I want to talk to you about is, you know, well, before we get started, let's talk. Let's talk about the morning skate before we get into the fun stuff. Uh, this show is, of course, being brought to you by the Morning Skate, a daily newsletter delivered to your inbox Monday to Friday, jam-packed with the best hockey stuff on the planet. It's daily dose of latest news, rumors, history, funnies, quizzes, etc. Little hockey fun information brought to you every day of the week from the hockey writers. You'll see a link in the show description down there. So definitely check that out. Sign up, and uh, you won't regret it. Now let's talk about this, the scouting call. I got ahead of myself. I excited. So um, <laughs> Peter, you were there live and uh, got to experience it and talk to the players, uh, see the fitness testing, all that. We got to see it on Twitter with your coverage and all the other guys that were out there. First of all, how was your experience, the overall experience being at the combine for the first time uh, live and talking to everyone? Um, just give us those overall impressions. Yeah, it, it was definitely, you know, a really great experience. No doubt about that. I mean, watching the combine and seeing all the clips from, you know, you know, on Sports Center, Sportsnet, all the main media outlets up here in Canada, um, you know, to be actually in front of there and seeing all the uh, testing, all the players engaged and everything taking place and hearing the VO2 max, all the screaming live, um, the wind <laughs> gate, hearing them just like yell into them, that, that to me is, you know, that 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 is the main attraction for the combine. It ain't the combine without those two events. And to hear that, even when we're talking with players, you're hearing all that in the background as well because the testing is still ongoing. But yeah, no, to see you know the players, uh, their you know agility, their strength, uh, getting to know them on a personal level, um, when they're done the testing, it was it, it was just a great experience. I, I it's something that I won't forget, and I absolutely it absolutely was a privilege to be there for the hockey writers. Yeah, and it felt uh, like it was exciting for all three of you guys. I know Andrew and Mark have been there before; they're the veterans. Uh, but you're you know this is the first time for you, mm -hmm. so that that's awesome. And I wish I could have flown out there and did it too, yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> I'm out on the West coast and I got to get my passport to even go over to the States. So mm -hmm. it was, uh, but in the future, I hope to uh, do that. So, um, you know, let's, let's start with some players that stood out, um, throughout the day. I mean, we, we saw on Twitter, different guys getting featured and, um, you know, different things that kind of stood out, but uh, what players for you that you didn't know? I mean, of course you knew a bit about them from different, you know, video and hot, you know, the clips and all that, but, um, now that you've seen them in fitness testing, um, possibly interviewed some of the guys, um, what guys kind of stood out um, after the combine here? Um, in terms of the testing, um, I, I mean, I have a list of, a, uh, of players that really stood out. Um, obviously, Marco Casper, Owen Beck, Julian Lutz, Logan Cooley, Christian Cairo, Cutter Gauthier, and Kelly Adelius were some of the names that you know, I found to be very interesting because they showed the strength and agility. And in terms of the categories that they were in for the results, a good chunk of them or at least three of those players were always in the top 25. So that gives you a sense on their ability to have, have the mindset, have the durability and the strength to carry forward and show show what they're capable of that they're able to play at the nhl level now you don't want to take too much into account that testing isn't everything mm -hmm. but at the same time you know it does give a glimpse on how a player does project and where they're going to go at some point um you know casper is listed as a possible top 20 pick and there's a possibility that he could go higher he talked to a number of nhl teams um, so he can be in that top 10 range or he can fall down to, you know, 24, 25, we don't know, but to see them 
be at the top of the always be at the top of the list. And even Philip Bicet too. I thought he looked really good during the testing as well. Um, those are just some of the names that stood out in terms of personality wise. I mean, um, I really enjoyed talking to Bryce McConnell Barker. I, I thought he's a very underrated name in this draft. Doesn't get a lot of his attention. Slow start because he missed the season, but he picked up his game and his shot was on display. Um, and the story that Rucker McGrady had, you know, being mm. from Nebraska and possibly being the fourth player to pl- be from that state. The current one is Neil Pionk. Um, the journey that he had to take to get to this point, it absolutely is phenomenal. And I know, you know, so, so many fans like it. Some others don't. I, I'm not going to go too much into that. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, j- j- just the story itself and the steps that he's taking to better himself and put Nebraska on the map as a hockey state. It really is you know, encouraging to see because you want to grow the game and it's in a market that you really don't see often. So to have Pionk there, to possibly have McGordy there, I think it's going to be, it's going to go well for him. Well, he's definitely one of my favorites. Uh, I've, you know, if you guys want, read some of my stuff, uh, you know, McGordy is really as high on my list, a lot of my rankings. And uh, for the Canucks, I'm hoping he is around when the Canucks pick and then they are looking at him. So, uh, he's definitely on my list too. Um, Devin, from, I, from afar, I just want to add one oh, more yeah. quick thing before sure. Devin speaks. I, I also, <laughs> I want to throw in Shane, right? Obviously, because there's a yes. lot of, yeah, you know, not necessarily controversy, but a lot of questions surrounding his play, his consistency and everything like that. When he was speaking, he spoke like a pro. I, I, I like, he's not letting the noise get to him. He knows what he's able to. And he said this multiple times. He said, he knows what he's capable of. He knows where he wants to be. He wants to be the number one prospect. And the way that he carried himself, the way that he had that composure, I thought he was really fantastic. And he, again, I, I, I think he's speaking like a true natural born leader and a real pro right now. Well, the thing is about Wright too, is he's, well, he's used to these interviews. I mean, he's probably got interviewed right when he was like 14, 15, yeah. you know, talking about yeah. potential uh, mm-hmm. first overall. So, I mean, he, he's been there, he's done that. So it's not really a surprise he's played, but that's great that, you, you know, you kind of see that. Yeah. Um, Devin, I mean, you were from afar, I, on, you know, through coverage on Twitter, um, social media and stuff like that. Were there anyone that kind of uh, stood out to you from that uh, coverage uh, that Peter and the rest of the guys were kind of bringing to us here? Well, I know the one storyline slash player slash, you know, development that really, uh, caught my eyes right away was, uh, the news that, um, Cutter Gauthier is looking to be a center going forward. Um, you know, he's, he, he's spent a lot of time in the wing and, um, it sounds like a lot of teams have been asking him about, you know, whether he wants to play center and whether he will play center. It sounds like he's going to play center next year, um, in college. And, uh, that's a huge development for a player who's mm-hmm. uh, already projected to go in the top 15. I think that puts him now maybe in the top 10, uh, conversation, um, you know, I've talked about him in my list of players. I could see the Red Wings drafting. Now I could definitely see mm. the Red Wings drafting him if uh, you know he's going to be a center going yeah. forward. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and he's a big dude. He's got a lot of skill. There's there's quite the toolkit there for um, for the kid. And you know, if he can play center, that's that's what you want. Um, just other things that kind of stood out to me would be uh, the questions. I'm sure everyone's seen some of the <laughs> yeah. questions that uh, the players were getting asked. There's the uh, there was the one about uh, picking ten dollars off a toilet seat or fifty dollars from the toilet itself. <laughs> um, I listen. I, I used to uh, I used to manage a movie theater back in the day, and I used to relish the opportunity to ask questions that would catch people off guard, just to see what their reactions would be. Uh, these are some unique ones, let me tell you. I uh, <laughs> I would love to know what the thought process is behind a question like that, and what like. You know, if, if they say $10 or 50, what does that tell them? But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, interesting stuff. And I would, I, I would love to go through it, maybe not for the physical aspects. I know I'd pass out about halfway through, <laughs> but uh, to answer some of those questions, I think it'd be interesting to uh, be on the hot seat like that. <laughs> Two yeah, players sure. that stood out with yeah. the questions about asking what animal you were. Two really stood <laughs> out. Uh, Mark, Mark uh, tweeted out, Charles Letty said that he would be a Komodo dragon. <laughs> and Julian Lutz said that he would be a Jaguar. Jaguar. And those two, I think to me, are the best answers. Because yes. especially with Julian Lutz, <laughs> with the way that he played, uh, with his speed and his strength, Jaguar makes sense. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can glean a lot from some of these questions, even though they're kind of weird. Absolutely. Um, that yeah. toilet one, 
I don't know. Yeah. It does kind of show that maybe you'd be willing to get your hands dirty. Like what kind of people yeah, kind of yeah. around, right? But I mean, to me, I'm a hard worker and I, I'm willing to get my hands dirty. I wouldn't do that. So I don't know. Yeah. Does that yeah. show what, what type There's of guy I am? I don't know. But <laughs> I find that even taking a $10 bill off the toilet seat's gross. So I, I don't know when that was last claim. So I don't know. Then... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What does that say? I, I'm not sure. So, I mean, it, it, it's interesting, some of these questions. But, um, yeah, and but one thing that kind of stood out to me, and I know, Peter, you tweeted about this, about what, and a few other red um, Maple Leafs writers did, uh, was the Maple Leafs approach to this. They used video and shift, you know, showing shifts of them asking questions about their, their mm-hmm. play. Um, using the video so I mean that that would glean to me if I was doing it that would glean a lot I mean yeah. if they were able to yeah, you know on the sure. fly talk about something they're doing and you know on a shift what would you do next on this or would you do yeah. differently that's something you're going to do in the NHL I mean yeah. to help develop your play if you can show that you can think through in your thought process um, of, your, of your actual play is nice and succinct and you know what to, to do. And that shows a lot to me as a play, you know, for a player rather than asking a question like that. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I believe it was Michael Jello that set, that confirmed that they were using videos to mm-hmm. get that, you know, in their interview process. And yeah, that critical thinking aspect that that's key, especially in those do or die situations where you got to think quickly, you got to know how to react. So to get that, I think for a team like the Maple Leafs that pegs that or to, you know, prioritizes um you know the the thinking and the iq i i think that's brilliant Mm -hmm. yeah well that's that's, that just shows that well the power of video now i mean back in like you want i even say like five six years ago it wasn't as big of a thing um to look at the video as being such a key part of your game Mm -hmm. as that's why they hire video coaches like almost every team actually every team now has one so that was something that never really existed. Um, not that long ago, really. So not for every team. I mean, some teams had it uh, earlier than others. So that that's something that's going to be used a lot, I think, in the future, even in the developing uh, development process, which is already being used, too. So uh, definitely cool to see. All right, uh, Peter, on, on the rankings side of this, I mean, we talked about it on Union Junction about how kind of the combine can affect uh, your rankings. Um, now that you've gone through it, did it affect any of your, will it affect any of your final rankings for some of these players? Now that you've seen them with the fitness testing interviews and stuff like that. Um, maybe a few here and there, but not mainly just on the testing, but on the, like talking to them personally and in the interviews and everything like that. I think that's more important than the actual testing because you can obviously, you know, physicality and you know the way you maintain your uh, game shape is absolutely important but the way that they compose themselves off the ice i think that's really more important to me um mm. shows their attitude the mentality um the skill set is on the ice anyways i think maybe i would like to see you know maybe just add in a couple more physical elements that deals with more on ice stuff than you know just what they have right now but yeah, to me, talking to them afterwards and getting a sense on their personality, I think it's more important because you want a person that's driven, you want a person that's motivated and everything like that. Um, the combine results, I mean, we've seen players have bad results, but still get drafted higher and still have an impact. So mm-hmm. to me, yeah, it, it plays a part, but it's not the end all be all. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, I, I mentioned that on uh, Union Junction about it. I think the interview process is a thing that kind of, you know, what would affect it for me because yeah, you get your per- the personality aspect and stuff like that stuff. You don't see through testing yeah. through on ice stuff. Um, you see that. And that's huge. Um, in the dressing room, we see how guys can, you know, be a difference maker in the, because of their personality and on the other side, not <laughs> because of their personality yeah. too. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's a big thing. Um, Devin, I mean, I know you don't release public rankings or anything like that, but in your mind, did anyone really raise your, their stock from what you saw, um, guys that kind of stood out? Did anyone kind of put, I know you mentioned uh, Gothier there as being a guy that now you could maybe consider for the Red Wings. Um, is there anyone else that you kind of saw that in that same respect? Mm, I, I will say I, I, I agree with Peter in the sense that, like, you know, we, we've seen players 
um, you know, not test well and still get drafted high. That's not the end all be all. So um, I, I do put stock in, you know, physical performance and stuff like that, because, you know, obviously you want to see them perform well and you don't want to, you know, if, if they can't do a pull up or something, that's probably a little problematic, but at the yeah. same time, there's, there's a lot more to it than that. It's, it's like, you know, the, um, the top prospects game a couple months ago, mm-hmm. like you yeah. shouldn't put all your eggs into that basket. You shouldn't put all your eggs into this basket either. It's, mm-hmm. you know, you got to take the full picture. Um, I think, I don't know that anyone really like dramatically changed my perception of them to where like, Oh, now I really think they're, you know, from here to there. Mm. Um, it, it would just be like, maybe this person's a little more um, feasible at this spot, or maybe this person it's like the Gothier thing where it's like, mm. I, maybe I was a little on the fence about it, but now, you know, if he's going to be a center, it's like, okay, then yeah, for sure. He's, mm. he's a viable target there. So it's, it's more just filling in the, um, filling in around the edges, so to speak. It's not, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't change the picture. It just gives it a more, a more, more clear view. I don't know if that answers the question or not. But. <laughs> no, it, it definitely does. And the thing is, that's the same. I, I, I agree. I, I think that's, that's where I am at too. I mean, there's guys that kind of stood out more and more solidified what I thought about them. Like McGrory was one that I knew had that high work ethic and, you know, was a guy like that, but through his interview and, you know, stuff that you said, Peter, through on Twitter there, that really confirms to me that he's a guy you, and a lot of teams are going to look at this too, that he's a guy you want on your team. Um, So, you know, that kind of puts, puts him into a, maybe a little bit of a higher level for me, but uh, same thing with, uh, you know, a lot of the guys was that like Slavkovsky being saying that talk about this in a second, but um, saying that he, you know, he could play center, which really adds to a lot of teams like, Oh, he could maybe, be a, a big centerman for us too. And the same thing with Gothier. That's another big key because he can play center. That really adds a lot to their game. So um, yeah, I think that's the same thing with me. All right, let's move to the other side of this. I mean, maybe this won't, I mean, there's some stuff that kind of comes out like where Sam Bennett could, could only do one pull up. That was like mm-hmm. kind of a red flag, even though that really didn't turn out to anything. Yeah. Um, but but uh, Peter, did you see anyone that kind of disappointed you in some of the fitness testing? Like, you're like, well, we thought he was strong. Why is he not being able to do this? Or I well, thought he was fast. Why is he, you know, struggling in this um, test? Um, did it, was there anyone like that uh, for you there? Um, yes and no. I think the one that mainly stands out, I think, is just Danny Jilkin. I mean, you see what he's able to do on the ice with his strength and the power that he plays with. And he only, from what I'm looking at the top 25, he only went into one category where he was in that, you know, top 25. And, you know, I believe that was just the pro agility. And he was 24th. Um I mean, it, it really would like to, obviously you want to see a little bit more, but at the same time, this also kind of dictates where his honest plays different off the ice. And that's not to say that, you know, he, he doesn't take, you know, training and going to the gym seriously. I mean, obviously he does, he wouldn't be in this situation if he wasn't, but I, mm-hmm. again, I, I, again, I'm not looking too much into that. I maybe you would have liked to see him be a little bit more in the top 25 in some of the other categories, but, um, I mean, even the four, uh, force plate, no arm jump, um, he was, you know, 24th in that regard. Um, yeah, I, I, again, I want to, I want to, I don't want to nitpick too much because, you know, it is, you know, they have different, not necessarily standards, but they have different capacities and what they're able to in terms of performance. And mm-hmm. what I see from on the edge with Danny Shokin, I see the power and I see the strength, um, if he's only need to be top 25 in two categories here, uh, I really just don't see it being a problem at all. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is too, is like, I know I read one comment on Twitter that, uh, you know, guys, if they don't perform well, it means they didn't prepare well enough for the combine. Yeah. doesn't mean that they're bad. Maybe they just didn't see it as a big, important thing, um, which can be another thing on their list is like, well, why didn't you think this was important? Uh, right. And, mm-hmm. But I mean, it could be that it's just maybe they had an off day, you know, some guys just, but well, I didn't feel really good. If I you test me tomorrow, I'm good. Right. Yeah. So I, I don't know. And there is, so that's why you kind of take, you don't take the full, all, okay, 
oh, Shane Wright did was horrible yeah. in all the categories. No, now he's 30th overall. Yeah. I mean, you can't, that's not right. <laughs> yeah. And even Jokin was like top two in the peak power output and, you know, one of the anaerobic fitness uh, categories. So it's like, yeah, he was able to be in one like at the very top, but at the same time, you shouldn't put too much stock into it if he doesn't reach that yeah. level mm-hmm. in the yeah. other ones as well. Yeah. Uh, Devin, you have anything to add to that or? Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> let's move to the surprising. Um, there's always surprises that kind of come out of this. So, you know, guys like Cali Odelius, I, I think that was one of the one guy had really long wingspan that I wasn't really anticipating. Um, Peter, did you see anyone that surprised you that kind of that you didn't think would be tops in any of these fitness tests? Um, again, uh, some here and there, I don't want to get too much into specifics on who, <laughs> you know, I, I thought should have been up at the top because, you know, it, it, everything differs, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, maybe I would have liked to see Liam Ogren in a couple more areas as well, considering his strength and what he's able to do with his pace of play on the ice. Um, Although I, I, I have seen Noel Oswin quite a few in there as well. So that's a really big, big bright spot for me because I'm pretty high on him as well. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, 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 again, I don't want to, I don't want to just focus in on players and where they are and where they aren't as, as much as like, mm-hmm. it is a good talking point. Um, it just seems like it, it, it's not fair to have the, I say, oh, I'm not going to be behind this player because he should have been here mm. or not and anything like that. Um, Fair enough. It is, you know, I mean, to be honest, j- just to see them engage and being taking part in all that was just absolutely, you know, incredible. Um, yeah, I, I really don't know what else to say. Uh, it's really hard <laughs> to just pinpoint on one player or two or three. So, yeah, that, that that's just where I'm at. Yeah. Well, fair enough. I mean, the thing is, is again, fitness testing, you know, you take it, you take it with a grain of salt maybe sometimes, but yeah. it is a thing to see that, you know, oh, guys are, are strong in this area. That That's good to see. Um, but again, you can't make a decision going and saying, okay, this guy's now a second rounder when mm-hmm. he was firmly in the top 10. Like you can't, you can't do that because it's not fair to them uh, either. So um, that's, before we end this section of the, of the show with the, our combine coverage here, um, there was one thing that came out. This kind of interests me because I cover the Canucks, but there, uh, they did ask Slavkovsky, one of the teams that asked Slavkovsky could play center, and which is weird because they don't draft till the 15th overall. There are no chance they're going to be able to pick him. But, I mean, they're saying, well, they're doing their due diligence. What if they want to trade for him down the road so they know he can play center? Yeah, that could be too. But there's also that that fire that's been before this, the Canucks talking about potentially moving up to second overall, trading guys like JT Miller, um, whatever. I wrote a piece on that, but um, I want to get your guys' impressions of this. Uh, Peter, do you think there's any fire to this? I mean, there is. there has been talk that the New Jersey Devils are – talking about trading the second overall pick not saying the Canucks will be able to do it but is there any any fire to this rumor or this kind of information that came out of the scouting combine here I mean it's kind of just like the same thing with the Red Wings asking Gauthier if he's willing to play center I mean Mm, you you want to get a sense because he is a big body he's got the size the skill and everything already um the Canucks are probably looking to add a centerman as well so um if it does lead to something, I, I don't see any issue if they're winning the swap picks with New Jersey and it or have a bigger deal mm-hmm. that uh, arises as a result. Um, you know, we know that there's the whole JT Miller rumor swirling around. Is there going to be a big deal there? Again, uh, just speculation off the top of my head right now. We don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, you, you want to get a sense. You want to see if he's able to, to be comfortable in that position. I mean, there are players that have gone from wing to center and center to wing before. We This isn't the first time they want to see a perfect fit. And if they feel that he is a perfect fit, Vancouver can move up. I don't think Slavkowski is going to fall all the way down to 15th because of his inability yeah. or ability to play center. Um, I think he's going number two overall regardless. Um but yeah, I, I think it's just Vancouver just doing their due, due diligence yeah. because yeah. who knows? 
who knows especially if they're able to swap picks i think that's yeah. the most important thing it's it's a it's a huge rumor anyway <laughs> it yeah. creates stuff to write about <laughs> even though i don't think it's going to happen the canucks gonna have to, i think that if that is truly on the table there's a lot of teams that are going to be like hey new jersey we got this i don't know yeah. if the canucks can right. match some of the other deals that could potentially come down the pipe um jt miller is a great player but i think there could be other pieces that other teams can say well we'll give you this and i think the canucks will be able to match it but as much as I would love it, because Slavkovsky on the Canucks and moving forward would be amazing because they definitely need a guy like that in their system. Uh, Devin, you think there's any anything to this rumor or, you know, is it just that due diligence thing? It could be a little bit of both because, I mean, you, you should, if you're going to have a prospect like Slavkovsky, you know, in front of you to talk to, you should probably ask him anything and everything you want to know, right? Mm-hmm. Regardless of whether it's realistic to uh, draft yeah. him or not. Because like you said, Matt, you know, you never know. Maybe in a few years they're in a position to trade for him and they'll they'll remember this interview when they are thinking yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know what? Like you said, this rumor is out there. And, yeah. uh, you know, the teams are connected for uh, for good reason. The Canucks have good pieces they could offer for it. And if New Jersey is, is listening, uh, you got to think Slavkovsky is one of, if not the player, that a team like Vancouver would be, you know, targeting with that mm-hmm. second overall pick. So I think it's, it's probably a little bit of both. Um, you know, again, like, like you said, not predicting it happens or anything, but um, it's, it's best to go into uh, that situation, whether they do make a trade or don't make a trade with as much intelligence and as much knowledge as possible. So they're just doing their due diligence, making sure that they know everything mm-hmm. that there is to know about, you know, one of the best players in the draft. Cause even, <laughs> you know, just to finish the thought too, at the end of the day too, it's even if it's not scouting for a player, you might have it scouting at a player that your opponent will have. And they'll know, yes. you know, if they're playing New Jersey in the future, they'll know yep. that that stuff. Kofsky kid can play anywhere in the lineup. <laughs> so be, beware. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's, that's very true. I mean, the thing is, it's like, like I say, the Canucks are, well, why wouldn't you? I mean, the thing is you, you're probably doing yourself a, a disservice by not trying to find out as much information about guys that you could potentially get, or maybe a deal does happen. I mean, it's, it's good to have that information. You know, he can play center. All right. We need centermen. So let's, you know, we can draft him and he can play, be versatile and play that way and not saying New Jersey wants him too. I mean, I, you know, I think you're going to have to take, do a pretty good deal for it. Does they need a guy like that in their system yeah. as well? So yeah, we'll see what happens. It's fun to speculate. And like I say, a lot of these deals don't happen because a lot of these high picks is all, never really comes to fruition, any of these rumors. Like, it's always every year, first overall is on the table, apparently, and uh, it gets picked by the team that had it. So um, we'll see. It's fun to speculate. It's fun to, to look at. And uh, it creates a lot of drama as we get to the draft. So got thanks, Peter, gotta- for... Yeah, yeah, we say. <laughs> yeah, got to be a hell of an offer to, uh, you know, convince a team to move a pick like that for a yes. prospect that, yeah, a prospect like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, the Canucks last time that happened, they traded to get both Sedin's, Sedin's two three. Yeah. So, and they had the first overall pick to trade. I mean, it's really all over the. I don't think that deal happens today, personally, because it's, nah, it's just too difficult. It's just too many no. moving pieces. Yeah. I don't yeah. think that happens, but. <laughs> it happened back then that was surprising too so you never know i mean things can come together and it happens so we'll wait we'll see and uh we'll be we'll be talking about it right up to that draft uh right up to the pick so right uh thanks peter for bringing up us uh, our your impressions of the event and uh it's great for you to be there to give us that and um We'll, t- we'll talk uh, as we keep going on this draft because um, our next episode, we're going to be talking about uh, some first round picks, second round for the Montreal Canadiens and New Jersey Devils. So uh, we'll see you then. And um, But this has been our uh, scouting combine coverage episode. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the next video.